Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going through my top tips to help boost your quantitative reasoning score in the UCAT. Before I get into the rest of the video, please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell. So I did the UCAT a couple of years ago and QR was my strongest section. I scored above 800 and I remember it was my strongest section by far. And I also feel like everyone on YouTube's strongest section was QR because I keep seeing people liking 800 plus and all this. But yeah, like QR is the strongest section for most people when they do the UCAT compared to all the other ones. Obviously this doesn't mean that the QR section is easy and that's why if you think it's one of your weaker sections, you need to start working at it quickly. So my first tip to help boost your QR score is to make sure that you're able to identify the hard questions quickly. So this might sound like quite a confusing and difficult thing to do because how are you meant to understand when a question is hard or easy? To be honest, the way I think of it is by time and how I feel during the exam. So if I'm looking at a question and I feel like it has multiple steps or I feel like I've been spending more than like 30 seconds on a single question, I'll start realizing, okay, maybe I should flag this question and come back later because you have to remember that every single question in the QR section is only worth one mark. So even though you you might be doing this really really difficult question even if you've gone through all that hassle it's still only worth one mark so you're better off flagging the question guessing an answer and getting back to it later and in the meantime you should be using that time to do the easy questions and getting those easy marks bear in mind that in the quantitative reasoning section you have 40 seconds to answer each question so as i said before if you feel like you're spending more than 30 to 40 seconds on one question you should definitely just flag it and get back to it later because you will definitely find easier questions as you're going along the way to optimize your score is to make sure that you time manage well and this is one of the ways you can do it so just to recap if you find a hard question make sure you flag guess and get back to the question later. This principle is the same with every single section in the UCAT because if you find a hard question, you should not be wasting time on it. It's just not worth your time. You should be doing the easier questions first. My second tip, which sort of leads into this time management idea, is to learn the keyboard shortcut for the calculator. So the shortcut is quite easy. It's just Alt plus C. But this will save some valuable seconds in the exam when you need to get the calculator out. I'd also say get used to using NumLock and the keyboard because you don't want to be tapping on the numbers on screen. You'd rather just be tapping them on your keyboard. It's a lot quicker. Some other useful shortcuts you should learn are going to be linked down below relating to how you should flag a question, go to the the previous question, next question, etc. So make sure that you learn all the shortcuts because they'll help you not only in the QR section, but in every single section in the UK. My third tip is to look at the range of data before you guess a question. So as I've mentioned before, a lot of the time you're going to be given really difficult questions that you're just going to have to guess. And you want to make sure that your guess is, you know, the most accurate guess you can make it. And one way to do this is to look at the range of data you've been given or look at the numbers that have been given in the question. For example, you might be given a question to estimate an average between a set of values. So let's say the values are from 10 to 100. And then one of the answers in the multiple choice section is like 200. You instantly know that that's incorrect. Obviously, this is an exaggerated example, but there should be ways in the exam where you look at the range of data and you start to understand, okay, well, this value is either too big or too small to be correct. So I can make an estimate out of these two answers. So again, make sure you look at the range of data before you guess because it can help boost your chance of getting the question right. My next tip is to learn the essential formulas for the UCAT. I cannot stress this enough. This will save you so much time in the exam if you know the formulas off by heart. To make it easier for you guys, I've made a document that has all the formulas that you need to know. I'll be updating it soon if I find anything extra. You can also check out my Instagram. I have some posts talking about the formulas and different units conversions that you should be expecting in the UK as well. I'll have that link down below. In addition to learning the formulas, make sure you're also comfortable with unit conversions. I've also put these in the document, so don't worry about them. On top of that, you should also get comfortable with interpreting graphs and data because this comes up in both the QR section and slightly in the decision making section as well. My next tip is to make sure that when you're doing the questions, you do them in timed conditions. So many people do questions for the QR section or for all the sections in the UCAT, but they don't time themselves and it gives you an unrealistic expectation as to how well you're going to do. You're better off doing timed questions and finding out the questions that you're weaker at when you're under timed conditions. For example, for me, I found it difficult to interpret data through graphs and tables quickly during the exam. So I always knew that when I saw those in the exam, I'd flag them first and get back to them later because they just take me so much time to do before I got all the easy questions done. So doing time practice gives you a realistic outcome on the sections you're weak at and also allows you to feed into this idea of understanding what is a hard question for you. Because as I said, some questions are just difficult because they take time to understand, but other questions are difficult because they're just your weak section. So you need to know which ones they are for when you do the real exam. My second to last tip is to make sure that you do some GCSE foundation papers. Now this is kind of like an extra tip but if you're really weak at GCSE maths or you haven't done any maths in a long time like you haven't done it for AS level or A level uh, I'd recommend doing some GCSE foundation papers or some arithmetic papers online just so you can get your basic math level up. If you do these papers under time conditions as well they can also help you out because it helps simulate the UCAT bit. and just in general they're just very helpful in improving your maths ability which is obviously what you need for the QR section because it's all math. And my final tip is to make sure that you use the whiteboard because you can do a lot of useful things with it. For example when you're starting the exam you can write down all the formulas that you need to know so you don't have to think about them actively while you're trying to answer questions and top of that during the exam you can write down key information or addition subtraction on the whiteboard as you're going through it i found it easier to write it down on the whiteboard than to type everything up into the calculator especially for simpler calculations and finally it just helps give some clarity when you're answering the question for me i just found it very useful so i'd really recommend it to you guys so those are my top tips for the quantitative reasoning section now i'm going to go through some of the exam questions to show you some of the skills in action and give you a bit of an idea of how you should be answering the questions quickly hey guys so now i'm going to be going through some questions these are just some 
general QR questions that I found online and I'm going to be going through them now just to give you guys a bit of a feel of what you should be expecting in the exam and how I would answer these questions myself. So question one says, Andre's total cost of hiring a Type D helicopter was £2,675. What was the total time in hours for which he hired the helicopter? So first thing we need to do is look at this row right here. This is row D and it shows us the values that we need to know. We need to know the deposit and the hourly rate. So first thing, I'm going to get my calculator out. Remember, you can access this quickly in the exam by pressing Alt and C. I'm just using the regular calculator here just for ease of use. So the first thing I want to do is to take the deposit away from the total cost. So I'm going to press numlock and I'm going to do 2675 minus 575. And that equals... £2,100. So we've got this value now. So this is the total cost of hiring the helicopter when we've removed the deposit. That's important because this deposit does not come as a part of the hourly rate. It's separate. So we need to remove this first. And after this, it's quite simple. All we have to do is use 2,100 and divide that by 5 to 5 because that's the hourly rate for the type D. And the answer is... Four. So you can see how I looked at all the key information there to help me find the answer to the question. So here we've got Andre's total cost of hiring a Type D. Again, this is key information here, the Type D helicopter. The price, which is the total cost, and the hours in which we need to calculate for the actual question itself. So by doing that, I don't need to read the entire table for the first question. I just need to look at row D because this is the only thing we need to look at, which is why it's important sometimes to just read the question first so that you can look at the specific part that you need to work the answer out for. And we're just going to check the answer now. And yep, as I said, it's correct. If we look here, you can read through this in your own time. So I'm going to go through question two now. It says, if the deposit for type E helicopters increases by 30% on Saturdays, what is the total cost of hiring a type e helicopter for three hours on a saturday so there's some key information that we need to pick out with this question number one it's relating to the type e helicopters only number two there's an increase to the deposit by 30 percent on saturdays so we're going to have to find the percentage increase for the deposit value on top of that we need to find the total cost for hiring the helicopter for three hours let's look at this row now this is the only row we need to look at for this question and something important to note for e is that we don't actually have a deposit value so the first thing we need to do is to calculate the deposit value because without this we can't find out this percentage increase. So the way to do this is to simply take off the hourly rate total from the total cost. If we take off this hourly rate total from the total cost, we'll be able to find the deposit. So what we need to do is hourly rate, which is 575, and times that by the number of hours, which is 10, this is equal to 5,750. We need to take that away from 6,750, and that is 1,000 pounds. So we know that regularly for this example, the deposit value for E is 1,000 pounds. So in order to find the deposit value on the Saturday, we need to increase this deposit by 30%. And the way to do this is just a simple percentage change, and we just need to times it by 1.3. And the reason why we times by 1.3 is because we use decimal values to work out the percentage changes. For example, if you need to increase the value of something by 10%, you'd times by 1.1. By 20%, it's 1.2. 30%, 1.3. 40%, 1.4, etc., etc. That's just an easy way to work out percentage increase. All we have to do here is 1,000 times 1.3 which is 1,300. This is now the deposit value for a Saturday. So all we'd have to do now is just add the hourly rate three times because it's for three hours. And if we do that, we just do 1,300 plus 575 plus 575 plus 575 equals 3,025 pounds. And that is D. I can check this now to see if I'm right. And as we know, it's correct. And there's a little description here as well if you want to read that. And yeah, so that's how I would do this question. So I'm going to go through question three now. So if we read it here, it says, Rupali hired a Type B helicopter for two hours on Thursday and a Type A helicopter for six hours on Friday. By how much does Rupali's total cost of renting a helicopter increase from Thursday to Friday? So a few things here. Number one, I can easily see that this is a percentage change calculation. Check out the document in the description to make sure that you have all the key formulas you need to learn. So the percentage change formula is the new value minus the old value divided by the old value times 100. It might sound a bit odd but as we go through the question you should understand it a bit more first of all we know that thursday is considered the old value because there's an increase from thursday to friday and if we look at the question we can see that it says that the type b helicopter was hired for two hours on a thursday and the type a helicopter was hired for six hours on a friday so these are some key pieces of information we need to know number one we have type b two hours thursday and then we have type a for six hours on friday let's now get into the actual question so we need to work out the hourly rate for a type b helicopter because we don't have that at the moment it's missing information what we'd have to do is the total cost which is 2500 minus the deposit which is 300 which gives us 2,200. We need to divide this by five to give us the hourly rate. This is because if we look here, it says that for this example, the number of hours that the helicopter was hired out for was five. So that's why we need to divide that 
total cost minus deposit by five to find our hourly rate. So now we've got this and we know it's 440. So the next step is to find out the value for Rupali on the Thursday. And the way we do this is we take this hourly rate, we times it by two for the number of hours, and then we have to add the deposit, which is 300. Just to show you, bear in mind that the deposit is here. There you go. So the 300 is there. So I'm going to write this down here so we don't forget it. So this is 1180 and this is for Thursday. Obviously, with the whiteboard, it's going to be a lot quicker. Now I know the rate for the Thursday. I need to work out the rate for the Friday. Here it says he used a Type A helicopter for six hours on Friday. And if we look here, thankfully, we have all the information we need for the Type A. So what we'd have to do is hourly rate, which is 225 times that by six, which is the number of hours he hired it out for, and then add to that the deposit, which is 120. So the value for Friday is 1,470. So that's how much Rupali paid on Friday. Now, using the formula I mentioned before, all we'd have to do is do the new value minus the old value divided by the old value and times that by 100. So the new value is 1,470, because this is the Friday. Old value is 1,180, which is the Thursday. Oh, that's a dodgy eight. Divide that by 1,180 and then times that by 100. So let's put this into the calculator. So we do 1470 minus 1180, which is 290. And then we'd divide that by 1180, which gives us this number. And all we'd have to do is just times it by 100. And there we go, we've got the percentage 24.57%, which is the percentage increase. If we round that up, that is 24.58. There you go, done. Then we submit it to see the answer. And as I said, there we go. That's how you work out that question. And here is an explanation if you want to read that in your own time. One thing I note though is that this is one of those longer answer questions that might take you more time in the exam. And you need to be able to judge whether or not you have that time to be spending on this question or if you should be moving on to the easier question. Like you've seen before, there are easier questions that you can do in a shorter amount of time. Bear in mind that these are both worth the same amount of marks. This is one mark and this is one mark. So as I said, you need to be able to judge your timing. And this is just a skill that you learn from doing a lot of practice papers. So that was my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like the content, make sure that you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification Bell. On top of that, make sure you check out my Instagram and my TikTok. I have some shorter versions of content there which are just more easy to digest than YouTube. Again, make sure you check out the description box. I have some resources linked there. And if you have any questions, you can drop me a DM on Instagram or write it in the comments down below and I'll make sure I answer it as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.